this video, we're going to go through two quick examples of finding the domain of a logarithmic function. The main thing you have to remember here is that you cannot take the log, natural log, or the LOG log, either one of those, of a negative number or of zero. All right, so if I just have a straightforward, say, log of x plus 3 base 4, all right, this expression, this quantity in here cannot be negative, and it cannot be equal to zero. All right, so in other words, it's got to be greater than zero. Same thing with this, the natural log of 3 minus x. This inside part here cannot be negative because I cannot take the log of a negative number. It cannot equal zero. So I have to ensure that that's going to happen. The way I'm going to ensure that that happens is I'm just going to take whatever that inside part is, and I'm going to say, okay, my x plus 3, I know, has to be greater than zero. All right, it cannot equal zero, and it cannot be negative. So it's got to be, in other words, positive. So if I think of this from an algebraic standpoint, I can just simply solve this equation, subtract 3 from both sides of the equation. x is greater than negative 3. That's going to tell me all the values that I can put in for that to be my domain. If I want to think about this from a number line standpoint, here, here's negative 3. All right, I cannot include negative 3 because negative 3 would make that 0. So there has to be an open dot there, all right, but any number bigger than negative 3 is going to work, okay? So a negative 2 would give me a 1 in there. If I plug in a 0, I'm going to have 3. So I'll have all positive numbers in there if I have anything bigger than a negative 3. So then my domain, in, written in interval notation, then is going to be a curvy bracket on negative 3 all the way up to positive infinity on the number line. Okay, so pretty straightforward here. You take whatever the inside part of that log is and set it greater than or equal to zero. All right, so if we do this one from an algebraic standpoint, same thing. doesn't matter that it's a natural log versus an LOG. I'm going to take that inside part, so 3 minus x, and say, okay, I know it has to be positive. It has to be greater than zero. It cannot equal zero. It cannot be negative. So I'm going to solve this and then see what happens. So I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides of the equation. Negative x is greater than negative 3. I'm going to remember that I've got to solve all the way down for x, and I'm going to divide both sides by that negative 1 coefficient. When we do that, it flips the inequality sign, and then I get a positive 3 over there. Okay, So that would be a review of how do you solve inequalities. When you are dividing or multiplying by a negative number, you flip the inequality symbol. All right, so now if I look at this one uh, from a number line standpoint, here's 3 on the number line. This says x has to be less than 3. All right, it cannot equal 3. It has to be less than 3, so open dot there. All right, but then any of the numbers that would be less than 3. If I plug 3 in, I get 0, so that's not going to work. If I plug 5 in... I get a negative number, so that's not going to work. But I could plug in 0, I could plug in negative 2, and I will still be able to take the log of that number. So the domain in interval notation then is going to be with negative infinity all the way down here. It'll be negative infinity all the way up to 3 with a curvy bracket because we don't want to include that 3. So two straightforward um, logarithmic type of functions where you're trying to find the domain, and the main part being there just to remember you cannot take the log of a negative number or zero, so you can do this algebraically. Definitely, thanks for watching. If the videos are helping, please share with your friends so they can benefit too. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks.